Woodworkers, uh, I've been enjoying some Paul Sellers master classes, and one of the first things I saw that really interested me was his cane, his walking cane. And I want to throw one together. I put one together already, and it went together pretty quick. So we're going to do another one, and I'm going to show you a little bit of what I learned. It's simple, but it's typical Paul Sellers. It's uh, it works, and it works good. It's solid. sound. Got here a seven inch chunk. It's going to be the handle. Give me a good knife wall here. A lot of you guys know, some of you don't. I prefer the eastern saws. noticed on your eastern saw that you've got a flat spot here called the shoe. That's when you're on your bench and as you're sawing it doesn't saw your bench. Just for ripping. I'm going to start it. And I'm cutting it real fast. Notice my finger pointed at the blade. I'm directly behind the line. And we'll continue till we get it ripped through. Do a little layout. What we're gonna have, I'm gonna cut a tenon on this. This is the shaft of the cane. Here's the handle. We're gonna put the tenon inside the handle. First I want to start, I'm gonna come in an inch and a half and let's make a knife mark at an inch and a half Oop, loose All right. come in three eighths I have a stout inch and three sixteenths so, I'm going to do a hardy inch, and we'll be fine with that. All right, I need to do another 3 eighths. Look, brothers, yep. And to verify, I'm trying to get it into thirds. Mark that there. Mark that there, and that's going to be heavy. Got a little bit hanging out here on the end, so we're good to go. Be a good solid tenon. 
Now I've got the tips in there. I will touch it. Put two dots in there. Come back a little bit. Two dots in there. I don't know if you guys can see them. But my dots here and here are dead even. That means I'm in the center. Make sure this is locked down. Lightly. There's my mortise hole. I'm on good face. Right in a worm hole, making it bounce. Oh, worm. Man, look at the spalting on that. Isn't it pretty? Nick there. Nick there. I love this little mini square because. flat and there is my knife wall now there's my face there's my face there's my good edge this is my reference this is my reference I'm keeping both of those up right so if I will, I'm a little heavy out here I want to be able to feel it Let's put me a mark we start our line There, nick it there, keeping my square on my reference face. And with that said, Let's see if we made it. Put it there. I have a lot of bees in my shop. You hear all that buzzing at that time of the year. Look at there. Dead on. So now, reference face. Okay. Alright guys, mortising time. I'm in my vise. Coming away from the line. I like leaving a little bit of meat on the sides of the lines until I get down a bit. Personal preference. I keep a leather strap so I can hold it and if I drop it, right there in my hand. Clean out and we will keep going down. Once I get down as far as I want to go, I'll flip it and do it again. And then at the last, I clean the ends up. It's just the way I do it. To reside. I've got my dovetail saw here. One of them. I see my lines. Lighter. Heavy. Hard. Chisel, relieve, saw, the knife wall,
little bit too much vibration, so I am going to drop it a bit. Might even cheat. Sit in a chair. Then you take your whole lower aspect of your body out of the picture to where it's just your upper torso. So if you find that you're deviating a lot, get lower. You notice the Japanese will sit on the floor completely. They take their whole waist down out of the posture picture to where they're only using their upper torso. And when you decrease the amount of pivot points, of course, you're going to decrease the amount of error. <laughs> side but that felt good that felt a little thick so tight Good, good, that's a little bit out. I've cut the handle out to my liking, or near it, and now I'm gonna use assorted planes, spoke shaves, rasp, gouges, chisels, and I'm gonna round that off the way I want it. There's a dial in this clamp, keeps it in my dog hole. Handy. I've been whittling and chiseling and doing things. The spalted part is really, really soft and tender. The tear out on it, it's unbelievable. I want the knife marks left in it. I don't want it just so pretty. It looks like it came off a machine. It might run a little bit, but holding it at one point, and I can still spin it, pretty handy. Nice and snug. Let's trim this up. I've taken the marking gauge and I've made a quarter inch gauge line on every corner. Basically, I'm going to put this in the vise at an angle. Crimp it up real good. Take my spoke shave. And relieve it. And you know, it produces some shavings. That's the first one I did. I'll continue to do this and we'll get back. We what this is is Texas Ebony. It ain't nothing but a great big old azalea bush, but man, that stuff is rock hard. It's brittle, it's rock hard. I keep it for wedges and pins and stuff. And what I got, I got my saw curves, tight fit, slides on. Now one thing, this stuff is a little oily, so when I get glue on it, it gets really greasy. It's hard to get them in because you hit it and it wants to pop back out. You hit this one, this one wants to pop back out. So I may get to cussing and I may have to get ugly with it and get a sledgehammer, but we're going to get them in there, alright?
Well, we got finished. Unfortunately, my battery died. I did finish the glue up, drove them down, cinched it up, uh, finished the quarters, corners a little bit uh, from Paul's teaching. It's a great project. Easy. Uh, my wife is in need of one here shortly, and she's going to have one I made. Her father may need one, and these things, you, you, everybody's got a family member they can give. It takes a small scrap to make this. It's a wonderful present. You can personalize it, do a little chip carving, put your name on it. Paul teaches putting spirals on it. Uh, he shows you how to measure it to the person. There's a lot of stuff on his site. Give him a shot. Give him a look. You learn a lot. I'm learning a lot. So thank you, Mr. Sellers, for your time and uh, for letting me enjoy your website. And uh, also, I'm reaching near 4K subscribers on YouTube. Thank you for what you do. Keep liking, keep subscribing, keep watching, and keep commenting. It's all appreciated. Tie forward by sandpaper, by the way.